Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create these random pa uh, geometric patterns and shapes in Illustrator. Um, I'm doing an advertising poster um, or advertising uh, campaign in my advertising class, and I'm doing all the posters and stuff for the group. And I needed to create a bunch of random shapes and random shape patterns, and this is the way I discovered to do it. I saw some tutorials that use the same techniques and stuff, but did it differently and only like limited themselves to one way. And I thought I would make a tutorial that covers it a little more and shows you all the possibilities with this, um, with the transform effect in Illustrator, which is really cool. So you can see some of the patterns and shapes that I created with this. Um, they look pretty cool, and um, like this one is just a simple shape I made and like it's free form this one's the same shape and then this one's also the same sh same shape that I created and you can just manipulate in different ways and then this is just a square a circle another circle triangle 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 and you can see just the same shape you can create really different looks so that's what I'll be showing you here today and I'm going to hop over into a new document. This is 1500 by 1500. It's just a blue to purple gradient. That's not really important right now. And then what you want is just a stroke. So come to fill and hit none. Then go to stroke. You'll probably be on a solid. But you want to click gradient. And then the gradient tab should pop up for you. If it doesn't, go to window and gradient. And then also go to window swatches. And then on the gradient, if you just bring down the colors you want, so I brought down the yellow, and then I brought down this pink, and then um, you'll have black there, drag that down, and then white here, drag that down, and then put the yellow and the pink on either end. And that's basically how I got this gradient, and that's the gradient I'm going to be using. Um, the background, you can um, do like a purple to blue thing and just put it on its own layer and just do a square or whatever um, or you just don't even use a background I already have this set up so we can save a little time but anyway I'm gonna lock that background layer and create a new layer and we're gonna be creating the shape so the first shape I'm gonna do is just a circle and if I go ahead and hold shift and alt click and create a circle like that boom there's our circle you can see it's a little thin so we can go and bump that to five point, um, so it's a little thicker. And we can change this later on, so it's not a big deal what you have it at right now. But anyway, select it and then go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and Transform. Now, a big thing to remember here whenever you do this is to check Preview, because I always forget. Um, so check it so you can actually see what you're changing. And then be sure to add copies. If you have zero copies, nothing will happen because you're not changing, you're not adding anything, it's just the normal shape. So um, I'm going to put 20 copies in there and uh, you can change that to whatever you'd like. I'd recommend starting with 20 and then adding more or less as we go here. Uh, I'm going to make the angle about 14. I recommend uh, an angle of 25 or less. Uh, if you go beyond that, it gets a little crazy, but maybe that's something you want. So you can experiment, do whatever. Uh, but for the circle, I'm going to show you... Uh, a preset that I, not really preset, but the circle pattern that I used and created. But let me explain a little bit about the scale first um, and the move. So the scale here, you can see if you go above 100, it just creates circles um, outside of the original circle, as you can see. And then same with vertical, does that. There's a simple circle pattern. By the way, if you didn't know, you could do that. Um, but then if I go inwards, you can see it goes inside the circle, and if I do both, they're both inside the circle. If I do something like that, it kind of warps it a little bit. There's a pretty cool geometric shape. Um, and this is all I saw other tutorials do, by the way. No one really went outside the circle, and that's what I wanted. So I'm gonna go up to about 138, is it? Yeah, 138. And then like 102 on the vertical to create something like this. And then the move section here, just does what it sounds like. You can either move it 100 to the right, 100 to the left. And you can see this is moved to the left, but also because of our angle, it'll spin. So it's not gonna like move perfectly straight. And then the vertical is the same deal, like up and down. Um, 
but let's go ahead and actually this is a negative 20 and then this is like six or seven works and boom there's like the first pattern I used and um, also down here you have options of reflect X Y and then random so whenever I create something so I created this I always click that and then click that and then click them both and then click random to see if it makes any difference and then you can cl click them all and sometimes it'll create a cool shape but it's usually not something I'm looking for and I think it would look better with less copies so if I bring that down to five like that looks pretty cool maybe that sort of eh, that works too but anyway I'm just gonna leave those all unchecked and this is like the first pattern I created which um, creates a nice growing circle that spins and it's something that um, I used for one of the posters but anyway let's go ahead and do another shape I'm gonna create a new layer go to polygon and I'm gonna click shift and alt and create a hexagon uh, if you don't have a hexagon by the way just double click and clicks or, or type in six I don't know why I couldn't get that out um, and then you have six sides sided hexagon so let's select that and again go to effect transform and then again make sure you click preview it'll bring your settings from the last one in so this is that circle settings also looks good with the hexagon too by the way um, if I just increase the that one would probably look better yeah um, but the hexagon presetting I have is 174 133 negative 100 and like negative 96 and then um, let's make that 14 I don't know why it's 15 I think 14 looks slightly better and then yeah that looks pretty cool click OK and you can see the, these lines start to get like really thick and if that happens like I said you can go back and change the stroke so I'm just gonna knock the stroke down to maybe two and then that's another cool pattern and this is also one I used on the posters um, with something like that and you can see how easy this is guys you just change a couple sliders and you get cool patterns and whatnot and uh, by the way if say I didn't like this then if I go to appearance or go to a window appearance I just have the tab over here saved and I select this hexagon and then click transform the settings pop up again and you can edit it but again you have to make sure you check preview so maybe I want to go inwards and create some sort of pattern and maybe change that to zero and zero and you can see that cool pattern we get with that and uh, let me show you too by the way you can see if I create too big of an angle like something like that there's no chemistry with each line it's just kind of like a random line uh, every time and maybe that's something you want but that's something I wasn't really going for for any of my stuff um, but feel free to do that and experiment with it and I'm just gonna go ahead and cl click cancel and we'll go on to another one so let's go ahead and do the triangle so grab that polygon tool again this time we want three sides and we'll bump this back up to five stroke I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit and then go to effect transform make sure you hit transform and not apply transform if you just hit apply it'll apply the last settings and you can't edit it and we want to edit it here so check preview again and this one is 138 100 18 and then 12 and we'll see how this looks by the way I have all these settings written down but this is not what it actually looked like before so you have to make adjustments to get something you already once created which is really weird to me because it all depends on the size of the triangle um, so if the triangle is the exact same size I had it before it would work but since it's different I gotta tweak it so if I go a little bigger here like that 147 and then bump down the stroke that's more like the pattern I created and looks a little better and maybe like use the top part here that's pretty cool um, just stuff like that you can drag it around see what looks good 
Um, this bottom left bit looks pretty neat. Like that pattern looks really nice. I really like that. Um, I actually might use that for like a jersey or something. I don't know. Now, the fa my favorite part about this um, transform thing is creating your own shapes. So let me hop over here and show you the shape I created. Like like this one, I thought this shape was really neat looking. And as well as this, this looked like a um, one of those topographic maps, I think they're called. So something like that. And then this was the other one I created with that, which doesn't look too bad, but I didn't use it because it's not the greatest. Um, but if you grab the pen tool, you can literally just create whatever shape you want. And I'm actually going to try to do something different. I did a rounded shape there. I'm just going to do straight, sh straight lines for this one. Like that. And then we'll go back up to 5 on the stroke. 5 is always a good place to start, by the way, when you're doing this. Because um, it's like somewhere in between. Like I'd say 10 is large and 1 is thin. So 5 is right in the middle and you can see where you have to change it then. So with this shape, let's go to Transform, Preview. That's a little chaotic. Um, let me try those settings I used on my one freeform over there. Let's see if we can recreate it somewhat. I doubt we can because they're so uh, vastly different of a shape, but we'll see. Um, so we have 107, 116, 1, negative 1. Um, we'll keep the... actually no, we'll go slightly higher 18 angle. And then we're gonna get a little crazy here and check random. And that's actually pretty cool. Um, Let's play with it a little more, maybe go smaller here. That's actually a pretty wicked pattern. I think that's pretty cool. That's not too bad. Let's move it around, see what we can create here. Let me move it over. And it's not looking too good there. Let's go back to the middle. Huh. Yeah, you can see I go too high of an angle, it doesn't look as good. Let's try to make them closer, it looks not too bad either. Something like that. That's a pretty cool shape. And then if I went the opposite way and made this negative, that's pretty cool. Like, the stuff you can create here is really awesome. I actually dig this one too. And then uh, we can play around with the X and Y reflex too. That just uh, interlinks too many colors though, and I like having the gradient. So say I like that. And then we can even come in here too and grab the direct selection tool, click a point, and we can round them. And that rounded looks pretty neat too. And if we select the individual one, uh, let me just select this one individually, make it sharp. Yeah. That's about that. Maybe do a couple others. Let's try this one too. Make that sharp. But yeah. Alright, that's a pretty interesting shape. And then I can also tweak the stroke so I could go a little thinner. I could go higher. Higher might even look better. Um, now let me select this, go to the appearance, transform. Um, I don't know if I talked about this yet, uh, but if you check or uncheck scale strokes and effects, it will just make everything, oh that's not a good example, let me just make this huge, actually it's not even in preview, so what am I even talking about? Let's make this smaller again. Alright, so this works. So you can see, if I don't have that checked, all the lines are the same thickness. If I do have it checked, they get exponentially thicker. Actually, I don't know if it's exponentially, but they get bigger as you go. Um, so you can see this one's thinner than that. Like it's only, you can only really see it when you get to like these extremes uh, or you go like the extreme other way. You can see that's like falling in a hole kind of effect. And yeah, so that's just some of the stuff you can do with this, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like. Um, you can download all the shapes I created in the other document uh, down below. You're going to have to be a Patreon member um, for the first two weeks if you want to download it. Uh, but then after two two weeks after the release of this video, everyone should be able to download it. 
um, and you can check it out then. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy, and peace.